For more on ADP, we're joined now from Boston by the Bloomberg Best on the overall economy, State Street Global Market Senior Fixed Income Strategist, John Herman. And John, we were just speaking during the commercial break. Wow, this is a big surprise. Yeah. This is a really extraordinary report. I, what it, it sort of it shows a couple of things. First, uh, it's, it's showing that uh, the loss in momentum that we've seen in, in, in payrolls for the last few months, it may be ebbing and passing, and uh, the economy may be poised to accelerate and recover in the third quarter. This is you know, very, very uh, much needed. Uh, the other thing is it, it shows just how difficult it was to seasonally adjust a lot of this data. What we have to remember is that April was a late, uh, a late reference week and a late Easter, so we had a lot of job gains in April. And then May was an early survey, and we had a very small level of claims and uh, small level jobs. And now we're seeing in, in June we had a late reference week, so we had a big gain. So if we average it all out, it looks as though the economy you know, may have had a little hiccup in the second quarter. But, uh, you know, it just looks like the, the, the pace of job growth may be pretty decent, pretty resilient. John, I know that you were forecasting unemployment, the unemployment rate to rise to 9.2 to 9.3 percent in the third quarter. Does this change that forecast at all? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, part what we were worried about, we were worried that uh, the economy, you know, the soft patch could linger a little bit. And as new entrants came to the workforce, that they would be gathering jobs slowly, as some indicators were suggesting. But this, is, uh, these, this report is suggesting that, uh, you know, in, in fact, as new entrants come in, recent college grads and so on, that they're actually picking up jobs. And that's a really, really good thing. And that will offset the cuts that we expect at the state and local level of government. So net-net, you know, we could hover in sort of a flattish level at the unemployment rate, may even, may even dip. Economics Editor Mike McKee is still online here. Mike, let me ask you a question. Are you starting to see any changes in the monthly employment numbers in Not terms yet. of estimates? Th those are going to keep coming in uh, throughout the morning as uh, the economists break down these numbers and reconsider where they are. But I'd like to ask John if this makes you reconsider what you are forecasting for tomorrow, given the fact that ADP is uh, you know, not always accurate in predicting the direction of payrolls. Uh, it's it's true, but uh, you know we have to. There's a couple of things uh, that we have to say. Is it it does a reasonably good job of picking up movements, month to month movements in manufacturing, and we saw a very solid gain of 24,000 in manufacturing. So that's a plus, and that was way way over what the consensus is right now for manufacturing, which is only 5,000. So uh, that's first point. Second point is. It's doing increasingly a better job of picking up service sector hiring. So maybe you know this this points to uh, you know a pretty potentially a pretty decent report. Is this enough to keep unemployment down? I think so. You know, if we're if we're going to be running at around 150 to 175 in private payrolls, if we're going to average that, that will offset the 25,000 ish cuts that we see at state and local government and so on net we'll be adding about 130 to 145,000 per month in, in overall jobs and that is consistent with the unemployment rate very slowly grinding lower. John we just got uh, two very positive indicators on the uh, jobs front here what does this mean for the unemployment rate consensus right now is at 9.1 percent but as we just heard from Mike a lot of uh, analysts already responding. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, again, what we have to, I think it's a, a good signal for the unemployment rate and possibly going, uh, you know, trending where it is or lower going forward. I think the, the real subtle thing to pick up is that, uh, you know, there is difficult time seasonally adjusting these late reference weeks in, in April and then the early one in May and then this late one in June. So, you know, the average pace of jobs in between April and, and May was about 167,000. And President Obama yesterday suggested that, you know, jobs were growing about between 100 and 200,000, which, you know, seems the ADP number seems to be consistent with that, with that guidance from the president. So I think what we have to do is just look at the number and, and realize that, uh, you know, there may have part of the soft patch that we all were thinking about may have been you know, part of it just may have been difficulty seasonally adjusting the data. So if we get this number tomorrow and, for example, we see private payrolls around 150 and then we look at the household survey and see what it guides for employment, the household sur survey may be sneaky. It may show a much better gain than we actually would see in the, actu the official payroll number. And if that's the case, 
people are going to have to get much more bulled up on the prospects for the economy in the second half of the year, especially as gasoline prices are falling and that kind of thing. John, quick question. We just had another economist raising his forecast, Joe Lavornia at Deutsche Bank. You're the optimist, but everybody's going to be leaning that direction tomorrow. What could yeah. go wrong? You know, what, what could go wrong is that, you know, there's somehow uh, the number is just not picking it up. But I, I'll say this. When you go back in history and look at all of these, uh, you know, this five-week survey period for April, followed by an early four-week in May, followed by a five-week late one in June, that pattern has of, most oftentimes generated a very decent gain in private jobs in June. It, that pattern has very seldom failed to do that. So I think we have to go into that number expecting a decent number. And if we get, say, you know, 150, 160, 170-ish, we get that, that's in line with the president's guidance, number one. And then secondly, look at that employment indication from the household side, because that will be influencing the unemployment rate, first thing. But the second thing is that one oftentimes is a leading indicator of where the payroll number will be going down the road. And if that number is good, you know, like 200,000, I think we're going to have to get all bulled up on the economy. All right, John, we got to leave it there. Thank you so much, though, for joining Thank us. You. Thanks so much, Mike.